What is a cybersecurity technical writer? In this video, you're gonna learn about the cybersecurity technical writer job role, which is actually a great career option to get your start in different cybersecurity companies without having years and years and years of technical IT experience. So you're gonna learn an overview of the job, what to expect. You'll learn about different job titles. So when you're searching online to try to find your first job, you'll know what to look for, as well as we'll talk about a, a kind of a secret way, not so secret way, honestly, of finding different jobs that are open without using things like LinkedIn, Indeed, or other job boards. You're going to learn some common job responsibilities of this role, the average salary to expect, the tools that might be used, as well as do you need certs, do you need college degrees, all that good stuff. Do you need to spend millions and millions of dollars on all these programs out there, or can you actually just go out and get this freaking job? So we're going to talk about that in this video. So let's just start off with an overview of this role. As the name implies, as a cybersecurity technical writer, you're going to be handling technical documentation. What does that even mean? Well, this is going to be things like user manuals, uh, cheat sheets, instruction sheets. You're going to be um, writing white papers, just a variety of things you might be doing for the organization. Now, why would a company need you to do all this stuff? Well, mostly because they don't have the time to do that. Software engineers are doing their thing. Other security professionals are doing their thing. And nobody really has the time to put the documentation together. So they need somebody. That's where you step in. This is a great way, especially if you're entry level, especially if you're a career changer and you've got a background in writing, whether that's a college degree or whether that's just you like to write, this could be a great career path for you and a great way for you to get into a cybersecurity focused company, whether that's a products or service company, without having years of technical experience and without fighting against everybody else that's trying to get a SOC analyst job or cybersecurity analyst or cybersecurity engineer or pen tester, right? All those traditional jobs people think of. This is a great way to get your foot in the door and then work your way up into one of those roles without spending years trying to get in your foot in the door. So great role to check out. And I know I've known a number of security professionals over the years that have actually gone into this role and then immediately worked their way up within a couple of months into the role they actually wanted. Let's talk about different job titles real quick here. So some other ways you might see it listed out there are gonna be InfoSec, technical writer, uh, documentation specialist, cyber technical writer. So it might be not just cybersecurity, but just put a cyber technical writer. And then cybersecurity content writer, um, security communication specialist is another one. So just a variety of ways it might be listed. I will say in the vast majority of cases though, you're gonna see technical writer somewhere in that job uh, job title. So if you're searching for keywords of technical writer, you should be pretty well off at most companies you're gonna be looking at. What about job responsibilities? What are you actually gonna be doing besides putting some paperwork together? Well, you will be collaborating with different SMEs. That could be the software engineering team that built the product, could be different uh, security experts in the company, whether they're external or internal to the company. But basically you're collaborating with all of them to really understand the technical concepts around the product uh, as it relates to cybersecurity. And then you're taking that complicated information uh, that people would think is just gibberish and, and you're gonna say, okay, here's what it really means in real life. And so that's really what the technical documentation is all about. For most cases, you're gonna be taking complex information, breaking it down into stuff that anyone can understand. Those would be things like user manuals or guides or marketing materials, et cetera. And then there will be some instances where you do more advanced technical documentation where it's for all the geeks to, to be able to use it. So for example, if I'm a technical geek at company A and you're at company B and you guys build the product, then you create the documentation that I would use as a subject matter expert to then be able to go implement it in my company. So you're kind of that person behind the scenes, making sure that all of us can actually do what we need to do. And then in addition to that, someone's got to keep track of all this paperwork, right? So you'll be working with like document management systems to ensure that this technical documentation is actually going to be easy to access. So basically, if we go back to the CIA triad, right? The right people, the right things can access the right information. It's not modified and we can all access it at the right time. In the same way here with document management, you're going to ensure that the right people or systems or whatever can access the documents you put together without them being corrupted and at the right time or when they need to. So again, that's all the document management system is. It's just going back to some fundamentals of cybersecurity if we look at the CIA triad. And in, in addition to that, you'll likely in most cases also be involved in like developing and delivering different types of training program around products. Um, and again, it's focused on the technical documentation. So let's say you create a user manual and you might have to train 
different stakeholders that might be delivering that to customers. You may have to train them on the what you created so they understand it better and they, under, and they can ask questions around what you've actually built. So what about salary? You know, we obviously all need to pay our bills here. So in the US, um, you're not going to make trillions of dollars doing this by any means, but you can make a decent rate. Usually it's around 70 to 75,000 starting out all the way up to low six figures sometimes. Just really depends on where you work at. The more you get experience, like if you get three to four years experience and you go to a larger security company, like a CrowdStrike, for example, then as a technical writer, you can oftentimes get salaries above 150000 a year in many cases. So it really depends on where you're at. So this could honestly be your entire cybersecurity career. It could be just working as a technical writer if, you, if that's all you wanted to do. So it, it can be a good wage. I've seen salaries as low as around 60000 But again, if you're getting a job as like a SOC analyst, that's around what you're going to make as a SOC analyst. So you can do technical writer, do a lot less work, honestly, than a SOC analyst and get paid about the same amount starting out. So it's not a bad deal for you. In the UK, around 30 to 50,000 pounds. And then in, in India, around a half million to 1.2 million Indian rupees. Again, all those salaries depend on where you actually live. So what about tools? Uh, well, bad news is you're not going to be like a super hacker and, and use a Metasploit and all that stuff. The good news is you're going to be using a lot of common tools like Office or Google Docs or whatever your company happens to be using. You usually be using some kind of a diagramming software. Um, Lucidchart is a popular one. You might be using other things like Figma, for example, to draw diagrams on things. You'll definitely be using some kind of a version control. Git is a very popular one, but there's other ones out there. Some kind of CMS systems or content management system. Um, Confluence is, is one. Uh, SharePoint's another from Microsoft. So there's a number of them out there. But essentially, these are just things to help you manage all that documentation that you'll be churning out. Now, what about college degrees and certs and all that good stuff? Well, like I said, the good news is you don't, you're not going to need college degrees. You don't need certifications usually. Um, these are some certs you can get. I would suggest that you probably don't want to even get any of these unless your company's paying for them because, honestly, they're, they're just a waste of money. You can take some different courses on technical writings. Uh, uh, local colleges here in the U.S., what we call community colleges, they'll have them. There's some different resources online. I think uh, Udemy.com has some courses on technical writing. So if you don't know how to do technical writing, there's some low-cost options out there to get the training. You don't need a college degree, but if you have a college degree in like English or journalism or anything where you did a lot of writing, that can help you a little more in getting a job over somebody else just because you've done a lot of different writings over the years. But let's talk about these certs that are shown on the screen here. So the first one, CPTC, is a Certified Professional Technical Communicator. Now, this is offered by a place called the Society for Technical Communication. If you're planning to make this like your career as a technical writer and that, like, that's all you, you plan to do for the next few years, then you may explore this one to see if it's even worth it for you. The CTC is a Certified Technical Communicator. Um, again, these are just ones that uh, essentially, if you've got some experience in the field, these are ones that kind of give you that recognition of like, okay, you, you can validate your skill set of being able to produce a, a variety of technical documents. The ASF is the Agile Scrum Foundation Certification. Um, that focuses on Agile project management methodologies. Um, the reason why you might want to get that is it's it's related to that's com Agile is commonly used in project management for software development. So you may be using that or at your organization. In fact, in most organizations, you're going to be using some kind of agile framework. So it just may be beneficial in that regard. It's not necessarily going to get you an actual job. Uh, MADCAP Certified Professional or MCP. There's a popular software called Mad, uh, Madcap Flare, which is commonly used in technical writing. And again, that depends on the company you're working for. But if the company's using that, then see if they'll send you to get that certification through that place. If not, maybe they offer, you know, they may just give you training for free or something like that. But see if they'll do that or if they'll reimburse you and something. It doesn't hurt to get a cert if you, if you can get it paid for by your company or if it's low cost enough. But none of these certs are going to like actually help you get a job. So I want to stress that so much here. Um, the ACE is the Adobe Certified Expert. They got those in a variety of things like Acrobat, uh, Adobe FrameMaker, et cetera. Um, some of those are used in technical writing. I, again, it really depends on where you work at. And if they're asking for a search in the job description as a hard requirement, then my suggestion always is just get a course on that. Then list on your resume that, hey, I'm studying for this search. So that way you get through the ATS filters and you can get your resume in front of somebody, some human that will actually look at it, see your value, and then give you a call for an interview. Then finally, that last one on the list is a CMI or the Content Marketing Institute certification. Um, again, if you're going to be focusing on more kind of content writing for the marketing team and stuff around technical writing, then this might be one you, you go for. But 
again, search not required, degrees not required. Biggest thing is can you write? And there's low cost options online to learn how to do technical writing. If you like this video, if you find it helpful, if it helps you kind of learn about a new career that you didn't think of before in cybersecurity, let us know in the comments. Let me know your career questions. I've got a lot of experience. I've helped a lot of people, tens of thousands of people all over the world get their start in cybersecurity and grow their cybersecurity career. Many of them are in upper management now at, at a, lot, a lot of big companies. So uh, definitely let me know your questions. I probably haven't heard any. Uh, you, you probably don't have a question I haven't heard before and I haven't answered before. Um, so feel free to post those in the comments if you have questions around job interviews, resumes, all that good stuff, just careers in general, cert questions, just post them below. We'll try to get those answered for you. In the description of this video, as usual, there's a link to the job interview course I put out uh, recently, depending on when you're watching this video. So check that out if you struggle with job interviews, even if you think you're awesome. If you're getting a lot of job interviews but no offers, then I had to break it to you, you're probably not the best at job interviews. So be sure to check out that course, that will help you quite a bit. And you'll also find a link below to our international best-selling book called Hack the Cybersecurity Interview. So if you haven't gotten a copy of that yet, there'll be a link to Amazon. You can go check it out there. There's a variety of ways and variety of places you can buy it online. It's got great reviews and it's been adopted here in the United States by a lot of university programs to help their students get their first cybersecurity job. So it's working. A lot of people have been helped by it. I definitely recommend you check that out as well.